Hey there, card folks, Speed Robo here, and it is a wonderful Monday morning. We are here with a new episode of Draft Duel, and commentating with me today is the wonderful Dex. How's it going, buddy? Going good, Speed Robo. Uh, it's been, yeah, we've had some great games so far on the channel. Very excited to get another one in. We've got two great players this week. We've got Moonfasa and Gravy. Drafting off against each other is going to be fantastic. Absolutely. As experienced players know, Draft is the full-blown competitive tournament mode for this game. And both of these players have won tournaments before. So this is going to be high-level stuff. If you want to get your eyes on a game that will help you learn how to up your Legacies Allure gameplay, this is the one to watch. So let's dive right into it. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the start of the drafting phase. Uh, we've got Moonfasa on blue and Gravy on red. They're rolling off to see who gets to be the attacker and who gets to be yeah. the defender. Straight away I'm seeing a little interesting thing that isn't technically the rules of Legacies Allure, but it, it increases the variance of the dice, right? They're rolling two <laughs> dice to see who exactly. can... Um, who, who's gonna go first to reduce the chances that they'll roll the same number and you know you gotta get that little extra bit of randomness in this no randomness game am i right <laughs> absolutely and uh kicking it right off the bat with uh great um Mufasa, sorry as the attacker the uh colors on the clock have been swapped accidentally but that's fine because it's facing the the right player. Just a slight, one of those wonderful little tabletop simulator glitches that still occasionally pop That's up. All right. Anyway, we're doing some drafting, right? So let's have a look at their kingdoms, go. shall we? Um, yeah, for sure. I'd like sure. to take a look at Moons first. He's got a mm -hmm. crazy Anwin kingdom going. He's got, I think I know what he's going for here. Do I see a Bowmaster? I don't. Uh, okay, so he's just got his Enchantress and a Thorn Elemental. I think he's going for a, a bit of a defensive thing? Yes, which might prove to be a bit of an issue since he's the attacker. So, because he's in the attacker role, what I'm thinking is that we're actually going to see Enchantress and Thorn Elemental get left on the bench. I'm expecting that Norfane Champion and that Green Dragon to hit the table instead. Yeah, absolutely. Norfang Champion, a card I haven't seen in quite a while. It's it's pretty nice, actually. Three movement, uh, it's got charging with movement two, and it deals a little bit of extra damage to a unit next to the thing it attacks. Yep, it's one of my personal favorites. I won a tournament with it. Nice. I mean, it's good at taking out backlines, right? You put it in one of your mm -hmm. forefront hexes, get a turn one charge. If there's a one health unit behind something, then it's, it's just gone. Absolutely. And now let's talk a little bit about Gravy. Uh, Kick, always an aggressive player, and he's demonstrating that today as well. Double Knight right in the front, ready to charge in and flank the enemy Sylvan lines. The knight generally a... All knights, hasn't he? He's got two knights. Yeah. He's got an Ultra Knight, a Heavy Knight. He's got an Aurelia build with a Short Sword, Worm Scale Mail, and Charging. That's another knight. I think he's yeah. just going for all the knights today. Well, you know, he knows what's good against Sylvan, and what's good against Sylvan is knights. I generally agree with you, but what um, Moonfasa has brought, I think is a good counter, because he's got his green dragon, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Which he's already drafted, and it's got cannot receive more than four damage in a single turn. This thing is a brawler that just completely destroys knights. Yeah, that is true. To help counter that uh, dragon, we might see a catapult hit the board. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. But honestly, I can also even see Moon bringing uh, that Thorn Elemental to counter the huge amount of physical damage return that is on the board right now. Ooh, that's a really good point. Yeah, and this is part of what makes Draft so interesting is the reading of the opponents and seeing what they bring, right? So because Green Dragon's already on the board, what Gravy's done is he's brought um, a lot more... Uh, and the, the clock colors have been fixed also, which is very yeah. nice. <laughs> um, 
So we brought a lot more ranged units to help counter the Green Dragon. So because of this, we might see Moon realize, okay, he has a lot of ranged and physical, brings out Thorn Elemental. But if Thorn Elemental hits the board, then what's Gravy gonna do? He's gonna grab Frost Maiden and Tempest Mage to help deal with that Thorn Elemental by getting some imbued damage going. Yeah, absolutely. I think what Gravy's uh, got an advantage on here is he's got some really strong synergistic kingdom building. He's got his frontline yep. units that are all about brawling and dealing massive amounts of physical damage return. His knights are flanking. They can go around the back, take out any sylvan back line. But he's also got his rangers, so if he needs to sit back, then he's got a catapult. He's got Frost Maiden. He's got his magic damage as well. He can deal with mm -hmm. quite a lot of stuff using this kingdom. Yes, whereas Moonfasa kind of took from what I'm looking at a sort of opposite approach, and there's two different specific builds within his kingdom list, one for attack and one for defense, and I don't think that either is a bad way to go. Personally, I subscribe more to the Moonfasa school of building, of essentially taking two blitz lists and just smashing them together. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Personally, when I'm building a kingdom, uh, I actually go a bit of a different route. I just look at the cards and I think, I want this, I want this, I want this. I really like all the cards <laughs> in this game. Generally, I end up with a 200 gold kingdom and have to cut it down. Maybe don't yes. use my method of kingdom building. These two have well, really you know got what? it down. <laughs> Well, hey, you've won a tournament on occasion, so clearly, you know, your style isn't necessarily bad either. Um, this is when, something I've never when seen was before. The most, um, what, what's that? Something I've never seen before are these taunting satyrs in the back line uh, on the central uh, units. So, I actually really like it. And the reason why I like it is that it's a round two setup because they are perfectly in range to mess up whatever is on that center hex. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I love it, I get to it. be honest. It's, um, Wait. I'm always putting my satyrs to the side. Uh, and, yeah, I'm going to talk about that with you in a minute. Oh. Uh, because, yeah, those the satyrs in the center is just good, right? But let's talk about what has just been drafted. Quick and one. I've literally, okay. I've never seen this card get drafted before, but I get it, because there's two things that Quicken 1 lets Moonfasa do. Oh, Number great. one, Deep Wood Sentinel Chains. Yeah. You can use the same Sentinel to chain move something like a Dragon or a Norfane Champion. Yeah, absolutely. The I second... did this um, a, few, a few Blitz battles. Uh, ago when I played against the yep. Taro. I quickened a Deepwood Sentinel and pushed a Thorn Elemental forward to kill a Black Dragon. It's really cool. Uh, and go ahead, the other thing. Here's the other thing. Taunting Seder, he can move, and then quicken one it, and then just grab something. That's not actually the thing that I've been looking at, though. The thing I'm looking at is Gladehawk. Because Gladehawk oh, can be moved yeah. forward early. Just to say this hex over here, and suddenly it gets quickened and is threatening the priest right in That's, the back line. Oh my gosh, quickened one. Oh, that, that, I, I'm so excited. You I'm... get so much value out of this card. It is only two gold. And as you move up the quickens, quicken one, two, three, four, five, they cost two more gold every time you do it because you get to target a higher gold cost unit. Quick and one, it's just so cheap that it doesn't really affect how much you're investing into it. You've just got a method of just slightly threatening your enemy a bit more than you would, and it's only two gold. It, it, it's so cool, isn't it? I mean, you're spending two gold for one action. That's worth it. Yeah, and no less an action on something that's already acted this turn. This round. Oh, uh, that's so it's, good. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm excited for this game, Dex. I'm s <laughs> oh, me too. You don't even know, man. Absolutely, me I too. Uh, and I just love how it's going up against, you know, straightforward Arangard. Like, I've never seen a more Arangard list, to be honest. Night, night, heavy night. 
Aurelia being a knight, it's just... It's so yep, straightforward, it's just, but it's still good. It's just Erengard. It's Erengard good stuff, is what we've got here. Mm -hmm. Um, I really don't know how he's gonna deal with that dragon, though. I'm actually not super worried about it if I was, um, craving it. And the reason why is that... Uh, okay, so I'm looking at it, and I'm just kind of thinking... I can just charge it with my knights, and it's, like, fine. Because it can't one-shot the knights. Well, it can if the, he gets his retaliation damage off. But let's talk about what's just gone down. Whoa. Deep Wood Enchantress is here. Deep Wood Enchantress uh, is here, and I'm all here for it. That is... Yeah, it's going to be so good in this game. Beguile, take control of target enemy unit. Get a knight. Yeah. Make it charge yeah. into your opponent's own knights. They take retaliation damage. Suddenly, you've got two knights on half health. One of them's exhausted. It's so, so good. It's... I just... This is gonna... This is going to be a game. It's gonna with, be a game. It's gonna be a game, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I can say at this point. Sylvan is doing some crazy stuff, and Erengard is playing it safe. And I cannot wait for these two action figures to smash into each other like I'm at kindergarten playing with a <laughs> Batman and Superman toy. It's going to be awesome. I am a little worried about that pick of Northane Champion, honestly, on Moonside. The reason I'm worried about it is it's only got four health. And Heavy Knight over right next to it uh, charges with four power. And that could just one-shot that champion. It's going to be in a bit of a threat range all game. Oh! Here's why it's good. Oh, yeah. Here oh, we go. Here yeah. we go. Four health with armor one. Well, what's more important and about this, uh, and the thing I'm seeing is maneuver, just like the Deepwood mm -hmm. Sentinel's ability, it can swap with mm -hmm. something. And what's it right next to right now? A taunting satyr which yep. is within range of exhausting that heavy knight right across from it. That's yep. going to be really well, cool if you can pull that off. Here's, here's why I kind of like the Norfane Champion here. Best case scenario, Norfane Champion gets to, like, swap ladder with the Centaur Guard and the Deepwood Sentinel and kill a crossbowman and the Tactician, right? Like, that's best case scenario, and that's good. That's totally worth it. Worst case scenario... Heavy Knight one-shots your Norfane champion, and then you're just like, okay, cool, next round, Beguile, I have a Heavy Knight. Yeah, definitely. That would be super useful Um, Moon just owning that Heavy Knight is great. Even if yeah. he can Beguile Aurelia, that's even better. He can spend all of her mana, get imbued, and go <laughs> right through the armor on those knights. Oh no, he can. He can just... Be like, all right, your hero doesn't have mana anymore because I spent it. That's hilarious. Oh, Pegasus. I like that in this matchup. Yeah, that's really good in this matchup. I... Uh, you can... He needs some way to kind of get into the back and wreak some havoc, and Pegasus is how it's you how do you it. Do that. Yeah, um, that's a really nice counter in particular to that Norfang Hunter directly across from it it can one shot that just needs to charge right into that back line and there's nothing defending that card so suddenly they've got a pegasus in the back line that's already taken out four gold and then can also charge something next round like the mystic or the sorcerer something mm -hmm. that's presenting a threat because that sorcerer is kind of the linchpin in moon's um draft right now because it is yep. um able to use its naturalized ability which breaks a unit and what break means if you didn't know is a broken unit has its passive abilities disabled this is going to be really important on things like these knights with armor and aurelia also with armor because uh, mm -hmm. he needs a way to break through that sylvan is not a high damage output army they need to use tricks to be able to get through that like yep. for example breaking 
So taking out that Sorcerer with the Pegasus could be key to winning the game. Well, the other thing that I do want to point out about the Sky Rain Pegasus is that since it cannot be exhausted by enemy effects, Taunting Seder cannot taunt it. That is so cool. Yep. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good counterpick to that. It can't be debuffed either, mm -hmm. so it can't be rooted by the yep. Norfang Sorcerer. It's, it's just a gen... It's generally a good pick against Sylvan because Sylvan is kind of the debuff faction. This is what they're about. It's what they do. So Sky Rain just ignoring it means that Sylvan has to deal with it in traditional methods, and Sylvan isn't good at dealing with cards using traditional methods. Yeah, absolutely. It's also got two power charging. That's just a backline mm -hmm. killer. It's going to yep. chew right through that backline. So now we're into the game proper, and uh, Moonfasa immediately kicking it off, using two mana on Anwin to gain plus one action and throw a shield onto his hunter so it's not one-shotted by the Pegasus. Definitely a wise play. Yeah, that makes sense to me. We were just saying it would be a free unit. That's He'd stop that happening, and I think that's perfectly good. Uh, what are we getting on the Heavy Knight here? Uh, I don't know. We're going to find out. I think plus one movement might be the best bet, but I'm not sure it's a good idea to use a tactician so early in the round. Plus one movement. So, yeah. plus one movement, got it. So, here's my stance on using your buffers early. I think that it is, in general, a good idea. And the reason why I say in general it's a good idea is for any new players who are watching, I typically like to break down the rounds into three general steps. The setup step, the positioning step, and then the combat step. And this is just entirely like in-game theory. But if you do all of your setup moves first, like giving out buffs, uh, giving out debuffs, uh, casting various spells that you know you're going to want to cast, then it means that your uh, defensive line is staying in position, and you're forcing your opponent to reveal their hand first by moving out of position. And that's generally why I'm like, so four newer players who are still learning how to, like, in air quotes, get good at Legacy's Allure, um, generally using your tactician as one of your first moves is pretty safe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know what I've actually just seen? The is really the purpose of this move. Yep, it was threatening that Norfang champion right there. And Moon yeah. has seen it too. He doesn't want so, that to go down right away. And that's very much fair enough. Tranquility right on that means it can't uh, be damaged, but it also um, is disarmed, so it can't attack this round. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I'd just use it to capture center and then go first next round and then murder the opponent's backline. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what Norfang Champion is for. Oh, Sky Rain Pegasus is going to grab that center first, though. You know what? I like it. I I wouldn't normally like this if I was looking at any regular old um, army. But what I'm seeing is Moon has forgotten or chosen not to, probably chosen not to. He's a very good player. Um, have... Units with charging in his army, the only really big charging unit he's got is Norfang Champion. And what this means yep. is Gravy can very much safely put that Pegasus right in the center, and he doesn't have to worry about it dying immediately. Yeah. The thing about it, though, is that Moon doesn't need charging when he has all this maneuverability. Yeah, absolutely, and that green dragon can just be maneuvered forward. Uh, I was about to say, uh, oh, Aurelia is, is Aurelia being silenced or broken here? Silence. Silence. She she is being silenced because uh, of the four range. Yeah. Uh, broken is only three range. So I was so, about to say the um, to stop this threat of green dragon being maneuvered and killing Pegasus, Aurelia can just drop a Solar Aegis uh, on the Pegasus, yep. which means it cannot but be attacked. Can't. But now she can't. She's been silenced, uh, which means she can't use her active abilities. Uh, mm -hmm. Heavy yeah. Knight just going in, taking the Sentinel. I like that move. It's not in a lot of trouble where it is. Um, it's, yeah. uh, so I don't like that move at all. Okay. Because now all Moon has to do is think, you know, a few moves ahead. Make sure he goes first and then uh, doink. 
yeah, steal it with the uh, deep put enchantress. It will be good, to be honest, having a heavy knight on his side. But what's really cool about this deep put enchantress is it is until the end of your next turn, which means mm -hmm. it goes through over the round. So yes. he could do this on his last turn at the end of this round, and suddenly mm -hmm. there is nothing Gravy can do about it. He can't move that heavy knight away because it belongs to Moon for the first turn of next round. Oh, that's so mean, but I love it. it, it was so, very, very good. what you're saying, what you're saying is that it doesn't matter because as long as Moonfasa acts with his Deepwood Enchantress last, he is guaranteed to have that Heavy Knight under his control. That is exactly what I'm saying, and that is what I think he is going to do. That's, um, really mean, and I am sad for Gravy. I'm excited to see it happen, if I'm honest with you. I just realized he has a Deepwood Protector as well. This man brought four cards that can maneuver. He, re he really wants to maneuver. I mean, it makes sense to me. If you're if you're bringing a green dragon, a very, very high cost, high power unit that can't charge, you're gonna want a way to get it to attack every round. And the way to do it is make it move with maneuvers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see here, Taunting Seder thinking about going into position. I do want to point out that the priest used its D spell to remove the silence on Aurelia, so Aurelia can now use her active abilities like Solar Aegis. Yeah, I think that's a really smart decision because otherwise that Heavy Knight or the Pegasus could be in trouble if yep. um, Gravy isn't watching what's happening on the battlefield. Yeah, and Mufasa looking to move his uh, Norfane Champion. I do strongly agree with this. Honestly, I just jam that Norfane Champion at like C3 directly in front of that crossbowman. That nothing can touch that champion this round. So just do that. And what's your opponent gonna do about it? Nothing. Oh, cool. He's not moving it though. I'm not sure Worst about that. Skip is uh, whatever, I guess. I I'm mean... not sure why you wouldn't move this unit. It reduces damage to zero currently, so it is in mm -hmm. no trouble whatsoever. And this thing is a backline killer. It can take out yeah. two units a turn, especially with that one health tactician or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I like what he's done there. Yeah, same. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, Moonfoss is a player that constantly surprises me. He, I always see him make moves, and I'm always just like, oh, I don't, I don't know about that move. I don't think that was good at all. And then, you know, three turns later, he, like, wipes out half my army, and I feel like a clown. So, uh, we'll, we'll just have he, to see what happens. what he's doing. Maybe, honestly, I think he might just be playing defensively, which yeah. makes so much sense to me. Despite the fact that he's got the attacker role and Gravy's got the defender role, they very much set these armies up as Gravy is attacking and mm -hmm. Moon is defending. And Moon yep. has barely moved from his position, but Gravy has to bring all of the knights to him, just charge them up one by one. As, as long as Moon can take those out one by one, Gravy's going to be in trouble. I agree. And, I mean, one knight is not looking too hot as is, uh, and that would, of course, be Heavy Knight. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've just seen Solar Aegis, um, the cannot be attacked buff, be placed yep. on the Pegasus. That means it will not be dying this round. There is absolutely no way that I can see that Moon can kill it. No, Moon doesn't have any uh, card effects that deal direct damage. Therefore, Solar Aegis is essentially as good as Tranquility. Yeah, absolutely. And I really like what this Pegasus is doing right now, because say no bye-bye to your back line if you're Moon Faster, because that Pegasus is taking out a lot. Yep. That's... This could be a lot of trouble for... Like, Gravy, what Gravy's trying to do is something that I also give out as tips to new players. And Gravy is setting up forks for the next round. So we can see the Heavy Knights back there ready to take out a card round two, turn one. And Skyrim Pegasus is doing exactly the same job, right? So 
So now it doesn't matter that e even if Gravy was down on actions, it wouldn't really matter because next round there's going to be a lot of damage being dealt. And this is generally how you deal with action economy based strategies, is you just set up these forks with your high cost units and you can put yourself in a really strong position. Gonna need to move a little more forward though right now if he's gonna mm -hmm. be able to do that, I think. And I think his best bet in this game is gonna be to move Aurelia um, within charging distance of that Enchantress. Get rid of it as soon as he can, make sure he's not beguiling twice in- Yes. Um, another option is to move Aurelia within kill range of Anwin. Yep, absolutely. Anwin is sort of a, a, another one of the linchpins of mm -hmm. his army. Uh, what, Nature's Bosom, Tranquility, Quicken. He's got every single spell Anwin can take. Yep. Yep, absolutely. So, again, I'm just I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out. Uh, one problem I'm having, uh, even with my commentary today, is that these players are both so next level, I'm having a hard time even predicting what they're going to be doing. It's really hard to follow just because they, they're so good at this. They they know so exactly. much, they know so much more than us. Exactly. Exactly. Apprentice Wizard uh, making moves, getting into position. Gravy rethinking that. Just skipping it. That's fair Just enough. Skip. That's it say, you know what? Much. It's good. It's good. So I'm not sure how much Gravy's army gels right now. He's got a lot of these fast knights and the uh, crossbowmen just ready to charge into the back. But he's also got his longbow archers and his enforcer who are both <clears throat> relatively slow units. And I'm not sure how much they're going to help him this game. I agree with that uh, to an extent. What I do think one thing that's going on, and we're kind of seeing this with Gravy, is that Gravy is sort of playing the defender role. He's throwing in a knight or two early to deal some damage and make Moonfasa not able to advance, make Moonfasa have to deal with the troubles back in his deployment zone before moving forward. And this is giving Gravy time to shore up those defenses, really cluster around center and say, okay, now I'm ready for you to move forward because you had to spend the first round or two dealing with these knights I threw at you. And I think Moon might be able to deal with them with that Enchantress, to be honest. Yeah, I think the Enchantress is really going to be the card that uh, helps deal with this strategy. But once that Enchantress is down, I am slightly concerned for... Moonfast's damage mm -hmm. output because he has not got a lot of high power units on the board that can easily take out those knights. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So yeah, the best way that Gravy could deal with this, I think, is to move Aurelia into that position over here, threatening the Enchantress. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I, I think Aurelia to C4 is probably the best way to go. Uh, you know, mousing over that Gladehawk. How's it going? Gladehawk? I could kind of see Gladehawk going to the G column, because then that's going to let him threaten the Apprentice Wizard. Yeah. It's a small card, but a two for two trade is pretty much hmm. fine. He's just keeping back, forcing Gravy to both, him. Both players kind of wanting to play defensive this game. I uh, expect it, just, honestly. <laughs> yeah, very interesting, very different, uh, especially from the last uh, Blitz game we recorded uh, earlier this week, uh, posted on the official channel, go check it out, which was a hyper-aggressive game, and this time both players are, you know, they're a little more cautious. They're kind of feeling each other out, seeing where they're going and what they can do.
Uh, what I'm curious is where's Green Dragon going? That's what I want to know at this point. I think Moon is just saving him for the end of the round. He's gonna push him up with one of those maneuvering units, and then he's gonna set up a threat on Pegasus or whatever else is near it. I think that's his best bet with Green Dragon, and it makes so much sense to me. Because just mm -hmm. forcing things in, like, it forces Gravy to make other actions and sacrifice maybe the Pegasus or something else in favor of that. I like Aurelia going there, by the way, because it's a nice threat on Anwin. I think we talked about that earlier. Yes, definitely. I still, I think that's a really good play. That was where I was originally seeing Aurelia going, because now Enchantress is in trouble, Aurelia's in trouble, the Sorcerer is in trouble, and the Mystic is in trouble, so this is essentially a round two trident that Gravy has put Mufasa in, and Mufasa has to think about what he's willing to sacrifice going into the next round. I do really like that visual of a trident, so I'm going to draw it for the audience here. There's three little there prongs of charging going. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, the the chess uh, terms are still strong in my mind uh, from back in the day when I was a uh, pro chess player. Oh, there goes Green Dragon. Green Dragon, I think it might just go ahead and uh, take a bite out of Aurelia this yep, round. Uh, that makes sense to me. Only taking three damage? Like, uh, yeah, it feels pretty It'll worth it. will be taking four. Aurelia's armed with a short sword. You are correct. Uh, still still worth it. I mean, six health left on that green dragon. Yeah. Seems pretty good. And we're creating more and more forks here. Um, mm -hmm. Green dragon's able to take Aurelia now. The threats are everywhere. Yep. Um, and you know what we haven't discussed the threats of? These taunting satyrs. They're yeah. sitting here. They can taunt both the Pegasus and Aurelia. And they the can't taunt Knight Pegasus. Everyone. They can't taunt Pegasus, right? Because it cannot be exhausted by enemy effects. So maybe it's just exactly. Aurelia. But still, that's one more unit that... Well, Aurelia and Heavy Knight. Yeah. You know, like... Although I have noticed that that Deepwood Enchantress is the last unit on Moonfast's board right now. Once he moves the um, Centaur Guard, yeah. Right, yeah, that's also there. But um, I think I think I'm seeing him controlling this Heavy Knight as soon as he can. Yeah, I think so. I, I think that's the play. You might he might lose Anwin for it. But I think it's good. Definitely good. And losing Anwin isn't necessarily a particularly bad thing, because Aradia can go down in just mm -hmm. the same way. Exactly. Suddenly, Aradia is way too far away to be healed by that priest. And all that needs to be done is a, a little maneuver on that dragon, and suddenly, Aradia's gone down with Anwin. <sighs> Oh, man, there's just, there's going to be quite a lot of action. Are we actually swapping with the Gladehawk? Because that would be awesome. That would be so cool. What a threat on Tactician. I like it. I genuinely like it. The only problem is that Crossbowman does then immediately take the Gladehawk. Right, so it's, it's absolutely not a viable move. <laughs> Yeah, I did just I did just see that. That is a free glint hawk, actually. Maybe moving the Norfang champ champion up a little bit might be the better option. Oh! Oh, that's a way cooler move. He's that's smart. That's really smart. He's just defending Anwin. Already yep, and him. here it goes. Yeah! And it's his heavy knight. Grabs there the heavy is. knight. And there we go. We're going into the next round. Gravy takes first. Oh, there goes the Pegasus. Pegasus. Straight away. Oh, and now what's the Heavy Knight going to do? Because it's not in range yeah. of anything. Heavy Knight is, uh... Yeah, uh-oh, actually. It can't, it can't do anything. All he can do with the Heavy Knight is exhaust it or move it to a spot that it can be killed. That's kind of rough. Yeah, it's not... Great. Yep, he's going to sit I it think... next to the green dragon. That makes sense to me. Yeah, That's... just put it next to the green dragon. 
doesn't make sense to me that he would put it anywhere else. It's just that's the best spot. Oh, the other thing he could do is he could just throw it back to his opponent's back line, you know, just get out of here. Yeah, that's definitely an option. Now, I think the reason we saw quite a lot of uh, passive gameplay on the left-hand side of the board in round one is because of that threat of the Heavy Knight. And Gravy yeah. has been really, really smart to avoid this. He's just... Mm -hmm. The worst thing that's happening is his Heavy Knight's getting moved and exhausted. That's for two mana on the Enchantress, yeah. which is an 11 gold unit. Gravy did not do what I did when I was playing against Enchantress, which was take my Iron Hoof Minotaur right next to the Enchantress and then cluster all of my two health units around it. That sounds like a really, really bad way to use your Minotaur. <laughs> it was! Wow! Because my entire, all of my bombs died. It was, uh, bad. <laughs> You know what I'm looking at now? I think Aurelia is the next thing the players need to think about. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what's going to happen with it. Solar Aegis and Combine on the Heavy Knight. I love that. Yeah, that's really smart. Let's get her out of danger. Pick start healing player. her up with Priest. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Gets both cards out of danger. Not losing any cards today. Not, not Green Dragon. I'm wondering if he's actually going for it, though. He's thinking about it. I, I mean, it's good. It is good. Because otherwise, um, Champion charges in, puts two damage on, Green Dragon swaps it, and kills Heavy Knight, right? Like, that's... He, he basically has to Solar Aegis here. I don't see any other options. I think, I mean, it stops him from charging Anwin. Unless he can, ooh! Maybe he doesn't need to move Aurelia out of danger while he Solar Aegises. Maybe he Solar Aegises and then runs off to the top right corner of the map up here and threatens Anwin. Um, oh no, he's just taking Anwin. I mean, I, I honestly, I just take Anwin. Like, yeah, it makes sense. I think I preferred what I was talking about just at the end there, uh, where Aurelia sure. could be killed and still threatened Anwin, but... Right, it's not plus yep. one action if you combine it, so I'm actually completely lying to you. Uh, I mean, it would. it's one of those things where I was thinking about, I, was, I thought you were talking about next round, but now, you know, uh, Centaur Guard takes Aurelia, um, Taunting Satyr uh, takes the shield off of Skyrain Pegasus, and then Northane Champion cleans up the Pegasus. Yeah. I think Gravy might- And that's how you make the most out of the situation. Yeah, Aurelia's yeah. going right down. I don't think he needs to take her immediately. But he is well, okay. Well, the reason why I would is that it is a safe play at this point, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. There's no other big threats going on on the board right now. Uh, so, whoa, we're stacking buffs on this night? Yeah, no, we're, we're the, not. Just the plus one movement. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, we're ruining everything. Oh no, oh god, jeez. I'm trying to help, but I'm making it worse. Uh, Taunting Seder getting out of the way for the Norfane champion, which isn't bad, but personally, I would just, you know, sacrifice the Taunting Seder. I'm wondering how uh, um, kill. Moon is planning on killing that Pegasus. Oh, it's easy. Taunting Seder champion. Uh, Taunting Satyr, right, Taunting Satyrs can attack. You, yeah. you forget these things sometimes because the, the cards are not usually used for that purpose, but they can definitely attack. Oh, and Knight kills the Sorcerer. Oh, I think. That's, uh, not good. That is huge, honestly. The Knights can no longer be broken, except for that Wisp up there. But that's not, that's only once. And not being yeah, able to that's... break the knights is going to be... It's going to be hard to kill them now. That is uh, not good, as the kids say. At this point, he could actually use the champion plus the green dragon to kill the knight. And I think that's pretty good. 
And then he takes the shield off the Skyrim Pegasus with the uh, splash damage. Yeah, very solid. Uh, Green, Green Dragon. Dragon. I like it, yeah. Green Dragon kill Knight. It can, yeah. It's free. Seems good. Seems good. I mean... Oh, and then the Gladehawk and the two Taunting Satyrs uh... kill the Pegasus, too. Oh, that's rock solid. And not even the Taunting Satyrs. It'll be the Northang Hunter that does it. Oh, yeah, that is rock solid. Rock solid. It's not, because... Oh, yeah, there it goes. Is. Yeah. The other option was uh, Northang Hunter starts whacking the knight. He can take out quite a few knights this round if he plays it mm. right. I think he would have been better to use those satyrs, but it's a bit late for that now. Now that Tactician yeah. is nowhere near any Glade Hawks, uh, that Shield Bearer can come in handy for something else. I really. So, you were talking earlier about how it's nice to just use all your buffing units at the start of each round. For more experienced players, I actually think it's often better to save them for later, especially with shield bearers, because yes. the opponent somewhat has to telegraph some of their moves, like with Gladehawk. He was saving that shield so that he could put it on Tactician if a Gladehawk got near, but mm -hmm. it never did, and now that he's seeing that there is no way a Gladehawk's getting to that Tactician, that shield yep. can be used for something better, something like that heavy knife. Now, this is important. Moonfossa needs to capture this knight right now, or that priest is going to move forward and heal it. You going to see it, though? I think he will. I, I mean, he, he should. Or he can threaten the other knight with a break from the wisps. Okay. I do like that, actually. It, um... It means that he's guaranteed to get a knight this Yeah, it's a fork. Though, personally... Yeah, I would just take it. I would just... I don't like my green dragon in that position right next to the longbow archer and the crossbowman, if yeah, I'm being honest. Yeah, I think that's better. Plus, actually, what breaking that knight is doing is... Like, the Gravy was going to lose a knight no matter what this round. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Breaking that knight would have just allowed... Um, him to choose which one of those went down. And actually, now he's got some heals on the green dragon. I think that's good. I think that's really good, because these longbow archers are going to be putting in the work, and there's no way to get around that. These satyrs are going to be huge next round. Yep. And I think that first action is going to be going to Moonfasa. Well, it depends. I don't see anything Does he he's want... gonna do unless he's going to beguile the heavy knight again. I just beguile he's, at the end of the just round. He's going to beguile it and then heavy knight is now in a position where he can actually deal some serious damage. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. See, what I would do is I'd beguile the heavy knight, use it to take out one of the longbow archers, and then use Norfane champion to take out the crossbowman and start putting the work on the other longbow archer. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, having played around with this Enchantress at the beginning of and the end of last round, um, it it just means people yeah. have forgotten that this is a thing. Heavy Knight is playing for Moon faster today. Gravy mm -hmm. is getting no use out of it. That card belongs to Moon today. Yeah, it just does. It just does. Oh, and he's disarming and his own heavy knight. He's disarming his own heavy knight. Honestly, I'm like fine with that. If I was, yeah. if I was Moonfasa, I'd be like, all right, so value. You know, straight up at this point, I'd just be like, okay, Norfane champion takes crossbowman. Yeah, that's that's valid. I think um, be better off exhausting that knight. Yeah, with the taunting satyr. No, you're right. Yeah, he's also got to watch out because um, if he doesn't do something with that heavy knight, that heavy knight becomes Gravy's next round. Okay, really funny idea. What if he moves the heavy knight to F5 and blocks the knight? Uh, I like that. I think it might be... He can't do that. That's attacking... That's his your own unit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, just yeah, exhausting move the heavy knight. knight. 
I just move Heavy Knight to F5 and just uh, block. Well, the Heavy Knight's disarmed right now, so it, it shouldn't matter. Uh, was that Gladehawk accidentally moved? Shouldn't it be up here? Mm, no, I think it's right. Okay. Whoa, Gladehawk's taking the Apprentice Wizard? I don't think that's the sure. best use of Moon's time right now. Um, I I don't know. It's fine. Like, if he, if Gravy wants to undo that disarm, it, here's the way I look at it. If Gravy wants to undo the disarm, he's going to be using the Priest. At that point, Taunting Seder can just say no. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Although he has still got his regular knight just running around. Um, yeah. I, I genuinely think that may have been a mistake on Moon's part. There are way more important things than that Apprentice Wizard going on right now. Maybe? Oh, See, yeah. I'd use the Tawning Seder, yeah, and okay, then it go. blocks. And then his own Heavy Knight's blocking the Knight, so like... You know I don't know, man, it seems good. Like, actually, now this Heavy Knight, it's, it's going down. It's done. For yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's enough units to kill it, and... That taunting, there's still one Taunting Sator left, and Taunting Satyrs have pathing, so they can even go through enemy units. So, that second Sator can activate if it wants to. Just okay, Crossbowman for one damage, yeah. yeah. I think hit the other knight with the Sator. Makes sense to me. Stop the champion from dying quickly. Seems good, honestly. Like, pathing is such a strong ability. It's just flying, but without saying flying. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I don't think he's seen it, though. Uh-oh. I don't think I like that move. That move that's, I think that's a, I think that's a right miss. Now. I think that's a miss. Oh, that's, yeah. Because now the champ's gone. There it goes. Uh, that's very scary. I think this game's going to be quite close. Mm -hmm. Previously, it's I coming down to might it. have been a bit up on it, but I think he's made a couple mistakes this round. I, th you know, the thing is, is that Moonfasa's made like one or two mistakes all game, and Gravy's just been able to capitalize on it. Really showing the chess-like nature of this game of when you have two really good players going at it, one pawn in difference wins games. Yeah, absolutely. One two gold unit. Uh, an action that should have been done one turn later, maybe a unit mm -hmm. that's one hex out of range. It yep. can completely warp the game, and all your decisions round one affect the rest of the game. And that's why Legacy's Allure is so interesting to me. You have totally different games every time you play, because so many different things can just happen, and I love it. Mm -hmm. You have totally different games every time you play, and you have all of, like the deep strategy of a war game in a pick-up-and-play TCG package, you know? Like, I love that. It's got it's got car the card game pick-up-and-play elements that I crave, and it's got the high war game strategy that I love to see in a competitive environment. You still with me, Dex? I'm still with you. I'm just looking at... Um, which knight is going down, and it looks like it's the heavy knight. Could be, yep. <laughs> and honestly, once that heavy knight's down, not too much threat left on Gravy's side. Those archers are only going to be able to do slight bits of damage. I think that the Gravy is kind of banking on his archers. I think the knights are sacrificial, and those archers are just going to be there to clean up the rest. Yeah, and I was actually about to say I thought the Enforcer was going to come in clutch and keep disarming that dragon, but it can't! Because the key thing about Green Dragon is spellproof. This unit cannot be affected by enemy active abilities, and the Enforcer's disarm is an active ability. That's not going to be helping him out anytime soon. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Uh, plus one movement on the Longbow Archer, it looks like. Oh, wait, no. Plus one power. Excuse me. Power. I, I don't that know. That makes more sense. <laughs> no, I, I... My brain thought power, and then my mouth said movement, and then my brain was like, wait a minute, what did you say? And I was like, movement? And it was like, no, power. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that does make way more sense, doesn't it? 
uh, just goes to show you how this high-level gameplay is frying my brain. I don't know how these two are still going at it. Oh! Green Dragon taking so much damage there. I, oh, I'm not sure I like that. Oh, no. Oh, that Green Dragon's toast. I would have hit it with the Centaur Guard. I would have sacrificed the Centaur Guard instead of the Green Dragon. I think that one little mistake might just be game. Wait, no! Yes! Green Dragon's fine this round, but... Safeguarded. Yep. It's going right down next round. That Longbow Archer can just whack it from behind. That's true. It's That's going true. It's right down next round, and all oh, no. that Moon will have left is a Hunter and a Centaur Guard. I think that might be game. I think it's, I think it's gotta be it. And Gravy's just I think there's just up in the center there. Yep, that center control was just too good from Gravy this game. And like we said, those two little mistakes just piling up. Green Dragon running all the way back. I uh, I don't know about that. I I think I it think makes, it's... it makes sense to me, but it's it's just not gonna be enough. I think it's just prolonging the inevitable at this point. Moon Faucet. Trying to figure out some way out of this blunder. And earlier, last game, last... I I think I want to do this every every time we do a recording. I just want to highlight an artwork here. Deepwood Protector. <laughs> what great art. What what fantastic artwork on that thing. And it protect right now. That No one's getting near that green dragon. Absolutely. Oh, wait, wait. Is that... Is that plus one range on Crossbowman <laughs> to kill the green dragon? Oh, no. Yes, it is. Oh, no. Oh, wait, no. Plus one power? It's plus one power. Okay. Why? You had green dragon, bro. It would have been pretty funny, but I, yeah, it's looking like they're done. I think, I think that's pretty much it. Gravy just closing in. Sealing the deal. Moonfasa does surrender. A great game from both players. Yeah, Dex, we'll thank you get so the much. Faction of Green Dragon going down today. <laughs> yup. Uh, Dex, thank you so much for joining me on commentary. It's been great, Speed Robo. I'm looking forward to next week. It's yeah, it's me gonna too. be a blast to keep going with this. I agree. And so everybody watching at home. Don't forget to join our Discord server, hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.